Mic check. Yep, here we go. Are you wondering what there is to do in the Pacific Northwest, specifically Portland and Vancouver area, in the winter? What would there be to do if you lived here? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you a teaser of what you could be doing in the winter in the Portland, Vancouver area. Some right in the area and some that requires a day or weekend trip. Hiking, skiing, snowboarding, sightseeing, exploring, camping, camping in style are all available here in the winter. I make videos weekly about moving to and living in the Portland and Vancouver greater areas, including all the suburbs. So let's get right into the content. There is a ton of stuff to do in the area within an hour or a day's drive. A lot of this stuff can be done in the summer as well. But the following are some great ideas for things you can do here in the winter. Now, admittedly, you need to dress appropriately. I am wearing a hoodie and a hat because today the high is about 46 with a 10 to 15 mile an hour wind. But it's beautiful, clear, and blue. So it's an awesome day to get out. You just need to dress for it. No shorts or t-shirts. But when the sun shines in the winter, or even in some cases when it doesn't shine, any adventure getting out of the home in the winter is a blessing. So let's start with the stuff that's close to home. How about a trip to Powell's Books in downtown Portland? This iconic business is really almost a library, but they sell books. Has been around since 1971. You can buy coffee or hot cocoa there and snacks, and they have places to sit and read books, even if you don't buy. There are other Powell locations scattered around the Portland-Vancouver area, but the one downtown on West Burnside was their original site and is by far the largest and best location. Um, without kids, you could easily make this an all-day event. Kids may not have the patience to spend all day here. But, of course, there are kid book sections. And while you're at Powell's, you might as well stop a few blocks away at Voodoo Donuts. Everybody needs to visit Voodoo Donuts. Or head up 10 blocks or so to Knob Hill and get some lunch or some snacks or treats. There's an awesome ice cream shop there that has homemade ice cream. But this is an inner city, walkable neighborhood that has some awesome restaurants and shops. Another place right in Portland you could spend all day, and this even with your kids, is OMSI, the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry. There are exhibits there to suit anyone's fancy, regardless of age. It's very kid-friendly, and they have some exhibits that stay all the time and others that rotate in and out. I know at one point they had a King Tut exhibit, and another time they had one on the human body. If we have a nice day and you're willing to spend a little bit of time outdoors, let's head up to Washington Park, which is on the, on the western flank of downtown Portland, and let's visit the Japanese gardens. This may be another that the kids are not particularly interested in, but they are, there is a train that runs from Washington Park to the zoo, and that may be some motivation for them to be good while you do something you want to do in anticipation of something they want to do. And the zoo is an awesome place to be in the winter. Or we could drive down to the south waterfront in Portland and ride the tram that runs from the waterfront up to, on the hill, to OHSU, the OHSU medical facility. And even though there's probably nothing for you to do up there unless you have an emergency and need some medical care, the ride up and back is just spectacular. The, the, scene, the scenery is beautiful. And then while on the south waterfront, there is a really nice concrete boardwalk that runs right along the Willamette River with lots of wildlife and a place for the kids maybe to burn off a little energy. Another thing we could do is get up really early and drive up on Rocky Butte and watch the sunrise come up behind Mount Hood. This is spectacular. Or how about some ice skating? There are indoor ice skating rinks at Lloyd Center and in Vancouver on about 145th and Mill Plain. And this can be great family fun. Or take in an NBA basketball game and watch the Blazers, our local professional basketball team. 
or a Portland Timbers soccer game. Even for someone like me that thinks that footballs are not round, this is an experience that is, uh, is quite amazing. There's an amazing amount of excitement that goes on at these games. And they don't call them the Timbers for nothing. When our team scores a goal, they fire up a chainsaw and cut off the end of a log every time there is a goal scored. There's tons more to do locally, but this is just what comes to mind. If we reach out a bit further, Multnomah Falls is just outside Portland, heading towards the Columbia River Gorge. This is Oregon's most visited tourist attraction. And if you live here, you have to experience it. You can walk to the top of the falls. The scenery is breathtaking. Another thing that the kids would really like, but it's about a three-hour drive from Portland south, and that is Wildlife Safari, and it is exactly what it sounds like. You go in your car and you drive around a multi-hundred acre preserve and watch wild animals like lions, camels, giraffes, zebras, etc. Yes, it is like an African safari. But please leave your pets at home as they don't even allow you to have a dog in your car when you drive through the viewing areas. Next, let's talk about the snowy areas to visit in the Portland, Vancouver area. This is quintessential winter recreation in the Portland, Vancouver area. You will need traction tires and you should carry chains in case they are required. I would suggest having an all-wheel drive vehicle and if you look at the vehicles that are passing you in the opposite direction, they are pretty much all all-wheel drive vehicles. Almost every brand makes all-wheel drive vehicles and these are just a godsend when it comes to driving in the snow. Our SUV automatically goes into all-wheel drive anytime it senses a tire slipping. We recently drove up to government camp to visit some friends in a cabin and there was snow on the road for 15 miles and we didn't slip once. Okay, here we go. The closest winter recreation area to Portland is Mount Hood and this is an hour to an hour and a half away depending on whether you're living on the east side or the west side. Downhill skiing, snowboarding, cross-country skiing, tubing down the slopes. The totally unskilled will have a blast up there. Spend a night or a weekend in Timberline Lodge or one of the many other condo complexes at government camp. Timberline Lodge has a huge central fireplace that's always going in the winter and is a great place to sit around with your family and get toasty warm. Or on the other side of the mountain, there's Cooper Spur, and there, and there is a mountain resort there. Or at Summit Meadows, you can actually cross-country ski into an area where there are cabins. There is no vehicle access to the cabins. It's a short couple mile cross-country ski to these cabins, and once you're there, they have all the creature comforts you could desire. Or venture further outside the Portland Vancouver area and go to Mount Bachelor, which is just outside of Bend, Oregon. Get a cabin in Sun River or Eagle Crest or one of the many hotels and motels in Bend. There are 15 local microbreweries in Bend, so you beer aficionados would have a hard time visiting all of these breweries in a weekend. And many of the brands you will recognize, like Deschutes Brewery. There's tons to do in Bend and you won't be disappointed with the investment to drive there. Or go a little further and go to Crater Lake National Park. This is just a breathtaking view in the winter with the snow covering the mountain around Crater Lake. But the ultimate in winter city tourism is to head up into Northern Washington and visit Leavenworth, Washington. This is a barbarian village of quite some size, with tons of shopping and barbarian food, from casual takeout to fine dining. Last time I was there, there was even a German cuckoo clock shop there. There are local places to ski there. You can actually take a horse-drawn sleigh ride. This is fun for the whole family, and something many people will never experience. Everyone in the Pacific Northwest needs to experience Leavenworth at least once, and most people will want to go back. It's even a great place to visit in the summer. And I want to make it clear that when I say Leavenworth, we are not talking about 
the United States Penitentiary. No, this is an awesome resort area. Plan on taking lots of pictures. And my parents used to tell me, quit wasting your film. Well, <laughs> fortunately with our phones now, we don't have to worry about that anymore. Just take tons of pictures, day and night. There are crazy Christmas type light displays there that are up for the whole winter. And they light the area in many areas with no street lights. Many of the streets are lit completely by decorative lights. There are tubing areas right in town for the kids. So these have been the high priority areas that I would visit for winter snowy recreation. Now let's talk about the Oregon and Washington coastline. The Sea Lion Caves is something everyone should experience at least once. The entrance is located on a cliff, I would say about 200 feet above the water level, and you walk downstairs into a hidden cave that is not visible from anywhere but in the cave, and it is loaded with sea lions. They make all kinds of noise and um, do all kinds of antics. Uh, the kids are going to love this one. The Oregon Coast Aquarium in Newport. The whole family is going to enjoy this one as well. There are many exhibits which are more interactive, um, just like tide pools with all sorts of uh, tide pool creatures like sea anemones and things you would see in the tide pools along the ocean. And then there are indoor exhibits where you walk through a big tube that runs through the water and you can see all kinds of fish all around you, including even sharks. Kind of reminds me of Jurassic Park. While in Newport in February, there is the Seafood and Wine Festival. The Oregon Parks Department has tons of cabins and yurts for rent. These yurts are more like glamping, glamorous camping. Not like setting up a tent on the ground and getting wet and being uncomfortable. No, these yurts are set on wooden decks and they have heaters inside. Some of them wood stoves. And if you look at the map that I've been showing, these sites are all over the state of Oregon. Okay, let's look at Astoria. Astoria, Oregon is a very historic town. This was the end of the Lewis and Clark Trail. Their final destination was about 10 miles to the west of downtown Astoria at Fort Clatsop, right near the Pacific Ocean. While in Astoria, I would recommend visiting the following. The Columbia Maritime Museum. Here you will learn all of the early history of Astoria as it was a shipping and fishing industry town. Next one is great for the kids and you might plan this at a point where you want to tire them out and that is to go up to the Astoria Column. This is located on the top of the hill in Astoria, and from the top of the column, you can see clear to the Pacific Ocean. It's kind of like a lighthouse. The stairs are circular, and they go up. There are 164 stairs, and you know, have your kids go up and down as many times as they want to. But the views from here are spectacular. And while in Astoria, there is a cool, River walk right along the river. There are tours of the old underground Astoria. Visit the West Mooring Basin where there are tons of boats moored and restaurants and shops that are located out on the water on pilings from an old cannery. The downtown core of Astoria is quite eclectic. There are many businesses that you won't see anywhere else. These are one-off and the and the buildings that these businesses are in are many well over a hundred years old. Astoria is quite an old community. Other things in the area of Astoria to look at, the Twilight Eagle Sanctuary, Clatsop Spit, which is where Fort Stevens is located. Again, this was from Lewis and Clark. There's also camping there. You can crab right off the jetty. You can fish right off the jetty. There's an old military gunnery that was called Battery Russell, and they had big cannons like they have on destroyer ships that were set to shoot at Japanese ships should they be sighted during World War II. Another great place for the kids to run around and burn off some steam. Go over the Astori Megalor Bridge. This used to be, when I was a kid, the only way across was on a ferry. But then they built this bridge and it was told 
They charged a toll for many years, but now it's free to go across. So go all the way across, it's about a five mile drive, to Washington and then head west. To th and the biggest town to the west would be Long Beach. They claim that this is the longest beach in the world. Now I won't make that claim because that's a big claim, but uh, that's their claim. And it is quite long. In the same area is Cape Disappointment. This is on the westernmost edge of the Columbia River as it enters the Pacific Ocean. This is a destination place for photographers to come, especially during big storms, and photograph the 30-foot swells that are coming in and smashing on the rocks. And if you don't time this for a coastal storm, it's still a really cool area. Other general coastal activities of note. Tour the Tillamook Cheese Factory, which also now makes ice cream. Get some samples and buy some treats. Visit lighthouses on the Pacific Ocean. There are lighthouses throughout the coastal areas of both Oregon and Washington, and many people make a point to visit every one of them. Some of these you can actually walk up to the top where the light was located and you get a really good view. Others you can't go into at all, but they're all located on high bluffs, and so the views, whether you can go to the top of the lighthouse or not, are awesome. Storm watching is also a big draw at the coast. In anticipation, kind of like, uh, kind of like tornado chasers, people anticipate the big storms on the coast with heavy winds and 30-foot swells which come onto the beach, and sometimes 70 mile an hour winds. When you see this kind of event coming, I would try to make reservations for a motel that are preferably right off the beach and have an uninhibited view of the ocean. And sunsets, or another thing that, should, that everyone should experience at the beach. Of course, on the east coast, you have sunrise. On the west coast, we have sunsets. And these can just be a byproduct of the day that you spent there. Here are some pictures from a recent crabbing trip my daughter and I took. A beautiful January day with temperatures in the mid 50s. Totally clear, not a cloud in the sky. Very light wind. My daughter commented that she should have brought her sunscreen. Aside from crabbing with a fishing rod and a special trap, or just a trap and a hand line that you throw the trap out into the water, there is world-class steelhead fishing on the coast of Oregon and Washington. If you're unfamiliar, hire a guide for your first trip to increase your chances of success. All of the coastal streams are free flowing without dams. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed seeing and hearing some of the possibilities that exist here for recreation and local travel. But remember, you have to call or text me to start your own moving experience. Otherwise, we will never connect. I have absolutely no way to contact you. And speaking of which, all of my contact information is included below each video in the Show More section. And the number shown is my personal cell phone that comes directly to me. And no, it will not go to a buyer's agent. You will be contacting me directly. And with that, until the next video, I am waiting for your text or call. Thank you.